Again, welcome to our weekly devotions. I'm Pastor David Shub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. Again, it's the Easter season, and we remember the joyous new life that comes in Christ our Lord. And we read from the 16th chapter of Mark's Gospel, the very end of the Gospel, which is Mark 16, 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Though we would never know it if it was dependent on the women at the end of Mark's gospel. Yes, most scholars I have read are in agreement that this is the original ending of the gospel. Think about that. The gospel ends with the words, So they went and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. What kind of ending is that? Last week I talked about the resurrection freeing us from fear, yet here in Mark's gospel, fear seems to win in the action of these women. The truth here is that fear at times wins in all of us, for we are human. But though this is the end of Mark's gospel, I believe for the writer and for the reader, this is not really the end of the story. In Mark's gospel, more than in any of the others, the disciples are, how do you say it, less than perfect, pretty flawed. They fail to understand, they fail to act, they in fear run away, and none are there at the end of the written gospel. Yet throughout throughout the gospel, Jesus never gives up on these imperfect, fearful, broken people. Jesus clings to them in love. Jesus continues to teach them and reach out to them and give them life. And I think the writer of Mark wants us to know that beyond the women's failure, Jesus will meet the disciples in Galilee and give them and these fearful women new life. And Mark wants us to realize, too, that beyond our failures, Jesus will meet us and give us new life. Yes, the new life we receive is one that sets us free from fear, but when we fail to embrace that new life, when we in fear do that which harms others by intent or neglect, when we fail to realize the new life that Jesus came to bring calls us to care for every person in the world, We know that beyond that moment, new life will eventually catch up with us. I know, because it's caught up with me. Many years ago, in another of my calls, I was supposed to do a nursing home service one Thursday afternoon, and I totally, I totally forgot about it. I was embarrassed, I was upset, I spent the entire night with visions of a room full of older people sitting there waiting for me with no one showing up. Chris tried to help me with it and told me just to let it go, but as it happens so often, we can't really hear the voices of those who are closest to us. So I went out and throughout the day feeling guilt and fear and frustration. And then I met with another pastor. I told him about how terrible I felt, and he said something that drew me up short and stopped me in my tracks, and something that I will remember for all of my life now. He said, the salvation of those people wasn't dependent on you being there, and neither is yours. 
The new life that Jesus brings claims us even in the moments when we fail to claim it. The new life claims us in our worst failures and helps us to live again, to begin again, to have new life, a fresh start. The real joy is that the new life often comes through others who are claimed by that life as well, just like that pastor friend of mine who opened my eyes to the truth. A few weeks later, I was at the nursing home and sheepishly apologized for my failure. And the truth was, all I really found there were the people who loved me and offered me grace. They embraced me, and I found that salvation and new life are not dependent on getting it right all the time, but come from God and God alone. The new life gives us a fresh start and helps us give others a fresh start as well. This is the reality which calls us to cry out during the Easter season that Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, help us remember that nobody is perfect, but that perfection is not the measure of our worth. The measure of our worth and the worth of all people is found in the outstretched arms of Jesus our Lord. Help us remember that new life always and to offer that new life to everyone we meet. Amen. New life is yours. And even in those times when you fail to embrace it, it's still there for you when you're ready to reach out and touch it. Have a wonderful week, and may the new life fill you in all you do.